modifiers and modified electrodes. So uh, please uh, take a given, uh, sorry, I was just like brain freeze. So uh, please give uh, close attention for this lecture so uh, we can get the, but the benefits from this lecture. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy, uh, for sure you will enjoy this uh, lecture from Professor Yatima. So uh, Professor Yatima, the time is yours. Okay. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ridwan, for a brief introduction. Um, so today basically is my third lecture, third session, and I really hope that the students can benefit uh, the knowledge that I'm sharing with all the students as an elective course. Um, and we have actually gone through first session looking at what we understand about the electroactive materials, and then the second lecture. Kalian masih di aku, and, and the second lecture is more on the um, technical part and also that transition. And now on the third session, I will share some application and maybe I can also share what we have done in at our lab so that you know that inshallah in the near future, if you would like to continue or pursue your studies for a postgraduate, you can see the whole picture of why we need to study this modified electrode. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't. Okay, all right. All right, so then um, I think uh, today we are going more on the application side. Okay, that's where we're going to share with you some of what we have actually gone through um, uh, over some years. So uh, I, I will really focus on electrochemical sensors because this is what uh, most of the work done at our lab, University of Malaya. But other than that, there are a lot number of applications that we can use this modified electrode, especially we're talking about hydrogen production, for example, because we know that we talk about hydro uh, production. Uh, this uh, method is very much used electrochemical methods. They are using electrolysis to produce hydrogen and oxygen. And they need a membrane in between to allow uh, hydrogen oxygen you know, to be separated and be collected. And then uh, we know that also we are using both photovoltaic. Okay, if you look at the picture there, you know that you need to actually uh, have like PV, all right, to, to absorb more energy and to convert it, uh, to convert the energy to electrical. So I uh, mean you need to modify the surface so that you know it will be more electroactive and then it can perform as the photovoltaic. And, and if you look at the capacitor battery and fuel cell, this is very much you know, application on electrochemical methods because it converts from chemical energy to electrical energy. And uh, battery is very much used as a small devices. But when you're talking about fuel cell, they're very much used <clears throat> for a bigger, uh, uh, bigger uh, prototypes. For example, talking about transportation and whatnot. So um, then we're talking about also capacitor is basically to store the energy. All right, and then convert it. So there's a lot of application actually. And because when we talk about, you know, a battery definitely, you know, that consists of electrodes and we're talking about electrochemical methods, the main basic uh, instruments are basically an electrode. And then when we're talking about corrosion as well, we know that corrosion is basically oxidized metals, you know, and there are a lot of electrochemical methods uh, can do a coating material. That means we deposit, electro deposit material on top of the, um, uh, uh, material okay, to prevent corrosion. So if you look at the uh, whole ideas, you know, there's quite a number of applications where we can use modified electrode, okay, because essential modified uh, electrode is actually part of the uh, electrochemical cell. So then we zoom in, we zoom in into electrochemical cell or electrochemical sensor because they're, they're, they're big their, their future are very bright on this area because if you look at the uh, projections, you know, looking at the numbers of uh, prototyping, you know, uh, looking ahead on this, you know, they want to have the smallest um, <clears throat> uh, product or instrument, you know, that can actually uh, sense uh, certain elements. Okay, so uh, we have like what we, we we say about electrochemical glucose sensor, and you know, very much used. This is a paper based where it's very much used as a daily, you know, as a routine where people uh, detected sugar level 
or they can also have like uh, wearable electrochemical sensors nowadays is very handy <clears throat> you can use it <clears throat> sorry you can use it while you are wearing it so uh, these are the technology that you know become important and important over some years and we can see that uh, recent years you know in 2022 and 2023 um, the uh, productions of uh, different products of uh, uh, electrochemical sensors is becoming uh, very challenging right and there are quite a number of um, application that we can do yeah, broader and do a multivariate detections as well it's not only single detection but also they can do a multivariate detection so this is where future ahead that you know electrochemical sensors is important then just to share with you what we have actually gone through you know the experience that we've gone through over maybe over 10 years you know in Stimlaya, where we've got quite a big number of grants from the ministry of higher education <clears throat> it's a prototype grant where we produce our own electrochemical sensors that can be uh, applied to to a field okay to a real uh, scenarios for example, we have actually developed a small kit, which is actually uh, with the USB uh, detector, where we can actually can convert the algorithm and we can get the reading straight away from the reader. So uh, the examples that I can show it to you later, that we can do like a, a nitrate and phosphate, for example, because it's very much can be used for agriculture application. Okay, we actually put our instrument in Cameron Highland, it's one of the uh, highland areas where productions of uh, strawberries is depending on the color of the strawberry produced. So we need to control the potassium to look at uh, how the color change, you know, when we actually injected uh, the fertilizer. So this is actually being applied and we put our, our equipment for more than a year to see how does this can be controlled over back to Unisimlaya. So we can actually control the production or control the fertilizers content um, using a cloud system. So these are uh, that we have actually gone through and we've got this prototype grant from the Ministry of Higher Education. And other application that we have been applied uh, to is actually looking at more uh, environmental uh, uh, issues, okay? Because these this, um, uh, electrochemical sensors can detect like trace metals, you know, trace ions, where we can actually see whether the uh, contributions of some ions and elements uh, from groundwater or even surface water can be done. So we can actually do the detection in situ, means we can do it on site, so we can get the readings straight away, okay, from the uh, samples that have been tested uh, uh, in field, okay. And then on the other, um, uh, uh, on the other approach that we have done is we are also looking at design molecule because I think I've shared with you in my first lecture where we can actually do our own design, you know, by, by using some um, uh, um, uh, softwares as well, you know, to look at the potential of uh, certain uh, electroactive material that can actually detect ions, okay, of other material or analytes. So this one also um, uh, is in our... Um, laboratory and apply the knowledge, you know, on the electroactive materials. And then other part of it, I definitely in the near future, I think in the current scenario is always about wireless, okay? And it's uh, connected to the cloud system. So <coughs> the explorations of this algorithm, uh, we, have, we have a collaboration with the computer scientists and also engineers uh, to, to, to come and develop the prototype. But again, uh, developing a prototype is, is very challenging because uh, we need a combination of knowledge. You know, it's on, not only electrochemist or chemis chemistry, but we need to have integrated knowledge across the boundaries, okay? Um, we, we have team coming from social sciences. We have team coming from medical sciences. We are also have a team from the engineering field as well because um, the integrated knowledge needed in terms of uh, applying the electrochemical sensors. So overall, I think um, this is what uh, the, the zoom in to the electrochemical sensors is important because uh, we can see that there are quite a number of application on, uh, especially uh, straight, you know, you can use the equipment straight uh, in situ so that you can actually do your measurement. Okay, so I would like to share with you the principle of the electrochemical sensors. And we know that, um, 
uh, electrochemical chemical sensors basically uh, uh, have a, a main, you know, um, uh, a main equipment needed. All right, it, it's a basic one. Okay, where they have a uh, three essential components. This is the three essential components, which is very important. One is basically a receptor, okay? So, and a sample and also a transducer. So basically what we are uh, talking about all this while from the beginning of the lectures is about the receptor. It's actually electroactive materials. When we deposit on the transducer, which is actually the substrate, okay? Or the electrode and they become and um, a modified electrode, okay? So we need to have reactant, which is your analyte, okay? Either you want to reduce from oxidized species to reduced species, or uh, you want to do other uh, oxidation or reduction, okay, above the surface of the electrode. And then what can be translate, okay, in terms of electrical energy is uh, using a transducer. That's why we need to, to choose a conductive electrode, okay, before we can actually put or deposit any electroactive materials on top of that. So when we do a modification of electrode, we just we want to in our mind we make sure that it's actually electroactive as a whole uh, substrate. Okay. So what important here? Okay, if you look one by one, uh, when we talk about conductive electrode, okay, this is this basically an electrode that used as the site of the reaction to convert the reaction into measurable electrical scale. So choosing the right conductive electrode is important. I think normally in laboratory, I'm not sure whether you have actually exposed to some uh, type of electrode, for example, carbon, okay, glassy carbon, or you can, as I mentioned uh, the, from the lecture before, that we can use platinum, we can use gold and others, all right? Uh, then we're talking about receptor or nanomaterial. This is the electroactive materials that we're talking about. So we also want to make sure that this can be modified, maybe uh, to perform as a catalyst or to perform as a membranes, okay, or other nanomaterials to make the electrode more sensitive and more selective toward the analyte. So this basically the whole system of this, we call it modified electrode. Basically, we modify the electrode using electroactive materials, okay. And then when we're talking about uh, when, um, uh, when we talk about uh, when a uh, reactant or analyte, this is what of your interest because we want to look into how this system can actually convert by reducing or oxidizing the material, and we can have your target analyte. And finally, definitely you can do readout because the readout circuit is very important to con to see the signals coming out from the conductive electrode. So you can see a voltage current because when you talk about electrochemical method, it's about voltage and current. You can change voltage, you can change current, and then you see, okay, when you change voltage, you can see how the current change. When you see uh, when you control the current, for example, you can see how the voltage change. So these are the current that is produced from the reaction when it is monitored, and you can calculate the important data such as concentrations from the analyte. Okay, so because normally when you talk about electrochemical sensors. Definitely, we want to know the concentrations, okay, of your interest. So at the end of the day, you can measure the right concentration. Okay, so basically, if you look at overall uh, the uh, setup, okay, these are the overall setups, all right? Definitely, you need to have a potential step, okay? You can have potential step where you can, where you can control whether you want to control current or you want to control potential, okay? You can do a lot of things, you know, using this potential stack. And definitely using potential stack, you, you can uh, support with a computer so that you can see the graphical manners, what's the output from your reaction. But what basic that we are talking about when we talk about electrochemical method is the electrochemical cell, okay? So this diagram shows that we have the three electrode system where we have the reference electrode, working electrode, as well as counter electrode. And what we being modified, you know, we are talking about modified electrode, okay? Modified with electroactive layers, for example. So we are talking that uh, 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 material that been deposited on top of the working electrode. So this working electrode is important. That's why uh, when you uh, study these uh, electroactive uh, layers and modified electrode, you can see that you are targeting um, the working electrode because this is where 
you will see the changes of what um, uh, interest that you want to look into when you use the electrochemical method. So for this uh, setup, looks very simple, okay? I would say that it's very robust as well, okay? But the most important, you have to understand what happened actually in the electrochemical cell and how you're going to translate the um, result coming up from here. Because, for example, uh, I've actually um, discussed with you or actually shared with you one of the method of characterization that we can see the changes on the surface of working electrode is by using cyclic photometry. So uh, from this computer display, you can see that this is called a cyclic voltammogram. Okay, from this cyclic voltammogram, you can understand the qualitative and later part when you change the parameter and whatnot, you can actually study quantitatively. Okay, so then there are a few methods, either cyclic voltammetry, the simple one, or you are using potentiometric method, or you can also use temporometric method. I believe that this uh, has been introduced to every one of the students at the earlier study of the electrochemical method. Okay, so as, as, as I mentioned earlier, we are talking about um, uh, working electrode, okay? So the, choose, the choosing of working electrode is important, especially when you want to do application, okay? For a normal study, you can always use a common one like these, you know, plate, okay? But for application to apply uh, on certain studies, for example, like sensor, then you have to choose your conductive electrode substrate. They are variation. The common one is option one. Option one is we can have it uh, in the lab. For students to use just a simple one, it's a road type, but you can see the surface area of it. You can actually measure because surface area is important when you study the amount okay, of the uh, reactant that can be oxidized or reduced. So option one is common, okay? Uh, then you can see the option two, which what we call it screen printed electrode. Screen printed electrode, basically you can get it, you can get it uh, online, okay? You can get it online because this one has, uh, has been uh, produced, you know? You can, you can just get it and then you buy it, okay? And you can apply it. But again, you can do it your own as well, all right? So the, in, inside the uh, screen printed carbon electrode, they still have the three electrode system, okay? So this one has been uh, uh, rigorously been, been, been used, okay? Especially to look at the, some applications of sensor. And finally, the third option that we have, like we have uh, different types of electrode, for example, ITO, we call it indium tin oxide coated glass electrode. Uh, this one is very much used uh, in the laboratory. Okay, uh, we have a boron dope diamond electrode. We have gold electrode. We have carbon ceramic electrode and whatnot. You can have a different geometrical size, either it's a plate, a rod, okay, a sphere, and so on. So it depends on your application because at the end of the day, when you study the current, you want to see the surface surface area that's being that's being uh, used, okay, to produce that much of electrical current. But what important here, you know, to choose the right conductive electrode uh, substrate is they must have low catalytic activity, okay? They are prone to electron transfer. Definitely, that's the main idea of it because it will convert, okay, to electrical energy. And they be less sensitivity, okay? It's not uh, taking part in any reaction, okay? And a poor selectivity because basically, we want to make sure that it's not disturbed or it's not contributing to the changes, okay, on the surface of the electrode. So these are uh, one of the criteria that we use. Okay, let's look into how we can actually apply. For example, lab-on-chip electrodes. Because lab-on-chip electrodes, this electrode is very much used as well because it's handy, it's light, okay? And um, what, what uh, the characteristic of this that's on chip the electrode, it will, we call it as a paper base. Paper base, okay? Paper base uh, electrode. And then uh, what characteristics that uh, can be applied as, uh, or important in, in this paper base uh, lab on chip is actually its abundance, you know? It's just um, uh, basically is uh, once we use it, we can, we can throw it away, all right? Because in industry, for example, when they want to do a testing, they use this lab-on-chip uh, electrodes. 
and it's affordable. It's not that very expensive. It's we convert to Malaysian ringgit. One one piece is about three ringgit only. It's not even rich a dollar. Uh, it's it's quite cheap. You can get it. Um, you can get it from from a lot of uh, companies as well. And then lightness, very light because it's paper based. So paper based normally uh, is not only <coughs> using for common studies, but they are very much used in biosensors as well. Okay, for biological detection, so they can they they also very much uh, use a paper based uh, electrode. And then biodegradability because we are using paper based. Okay, uh, we are not using polymers. So in this particular case, it is uh, considering a biodegradable. Okay. But choosing the right uh, uh, paper-based uh, lab-on-chip electrodes is depending on your target analyte, okay? Because we have a different type of paper, okay? Uh, definitely, because paper, uh, some way, is a porous, okay? Uh, then, you know, it's, it depends, okay? Whether you want to use a uh, filter or, you know, common type of uh, papers and so on. So, but then again, to say it in a, in a, in a common word, is using papers. And then they have a different configurations as well. It's a 1D, 2D, or 3D. So the protocol based on the use of cost-effective manufacturing techniques such as drop casting and wax screen printing and also can be completed within less hour. Because you know the screen printed, for example, uh, carbon printed, for example, uh, you can actually uh, do it you know, in the lab. But again, uh, hopefully you can have a proper printer, carbon printer, so that you can have a homogeneous or um, the same surface area that you can actually target it on your carbon printer. So that's why considering a uh, paper base is uh, cheap, all right? So that uh, you, you can always have uh, some electroactive uh, layers on top of it so that to make it more uh, conductive. So <clears throat> these are uh, different type of um, uh, lab on chip electrode based on paper. Next one. Uh, we are also looking at a uh, lab on chip, but with the current um, uh, research, you know, uh, current research, there are a lot of uh, work uh, looking at multivariate detection. Okay, it means that we are not only targeting a single ions, but we are targeting on multiple ions detection. Okay, so in multiple ion detection, there are a lot of challenges. Because every um, uh, electroactive materials or modified electrode, we need to study the selectivity and um, uh, and also the um, uh, uh, specific specificity. Basically, specific to certain target ions, and we look at the uh, 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 sensitivity of it. Okay, so uh, again, if we look at this uh, current technology, it, we are looking at multivariate or multi-analyte detection. So uh, uh, then we 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 are we are looking into more uh, robust you know um, robust uh, electrode. So in this case, uh, we are looking into one of the example where we can have like almost a prototype uh, of uh, the whole electrochemical system, where we can directly do a measurement, for example, uh, cyclovolumetry and others. All right, if you look at here. And then um, you can do your testing straight away, okay, from the strips, okay, and you can finally get the results coming out from here, okay. So you can actually control uh, the performance of the uh, target analytes. So from this, I think it is very much used nowadays, especially for multi, as I said, multivariate detection, and uh, it looks like it's quite handy, okay. Uh, that they can use uh, multivariate. For example, they want to detect uh, concentration of uh, uh, acidic pH. They can also um, uh, targeting, you know, the concentrations of your target ions at the same time. But again, uh, the most important is the uh, electrode surface. The modified electrodes can be can can detect or be sensitive towards a multivariate uh, detector. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I'm sharing with you uh, some target analytes because when you talk about applications, you know, you must have your target analytes. What are you looking at? Okay, I think um, I um, these are some of the uh, target analytes that being um, that being uh, uh, 
explore in, in our laboratory, okay? For example, of course, the common one is heavy metals, because as I mentioned, as, as I mentioned earlier, that some application is towards environmental issues, okay? And the most common is actually heavy metals. Uh, we want to see the toxicity of some heavy metals as well in the polluted water, or maybe uh, what we interest here, because uh, in Malaysia nowadays, uh, we are using uh, quite heavily on the groundwater beside the surface water, because um, when we look at the uh, productions of groundwater, they are more cleaner, okay? So it's less treatment uh, as compared to the surface water. But then again, the important here is what, how we can actually detect certain heavy metals, okay, on, on the real sample. So then some target um, heavy metals, for example, uh, you're talking about iron, ion, okay, talking about manganese, you are talking about, for example, nowadays also people talking about arsenic, okay. So in some part of Malaysia, for example, in, in, uh, in North, <coughs> North uh, East, okay, uh, Malaysia, uh, they, are, they are using quite a number of um, uh, well system okay, for groundwater extraction. Uh, but again, uh, some people are not aware that in, in some area, uh, we can also detect some heavy metals. So uh, this is very handy for us when we do for a field trip or when to do an institute measurement, you can use our electrochemical sensors. The other one is <coughs> on viruses. But viruses uh, in our laboratory, I have uh, two members who are actually working on this uh, virus. But definitely, we're talking about viruses is, is very challenging because we need a real sample. And, um, but, but the good thing is that when they do this kind of research, the impact factor will be high, okay, be more recognized because it's related to medical field. Okay, uh, so then. But then again, uh, the electroactive material has to be uh, really targeted, targeted on certain viruses. Okay, on the drugs, these are quite common. <coughs> uh, these are quite common that we are uh, actually targeting. For example, you know the common one is dopamine. Uh, so we are doing drugs as well. So we we are also um, uh, doing some drugs. For example, paper based as well as well as the electroactive materials. But other than that, other common uh, chemicals like peroxide, glucose, formaldehyde. I mean, this is quite common that uh, I can say that, you know, because we are targeting um, uh, specific uh, chemicals, you know. Uh, as, as I mentioned much earlier, if you are doing a multi-variant uh, detection, that will be more challenging. But it's not easy, you know. It's not easy because we need to have the technology and we need to have the um, uh, sensitivity analysis in quite a thorough way, uh, uh, then we can we can understand the whole system of this, how uh, we can actually have that such uh, output okay, from the uh, electrodes. Okay? So on the right hand side is some of the ions or some of the chemicals that have been detected uh, in our lab, like for example, DA is dopamine, okay? AA is amino acids, okay? and so on. And GLU is actually glucose and other things, peroxide, plumbing to part, plus, and so on. So um, there are quite a number of um, postgraduate students are working on this, and as well as undergraduate students as well. So because we would like to actually introduce that this can be done, you know, at, at their level, so that they understand more on the uh, how the, the electrochemical method can be used, you know, to target certain analytes. <clears throat> Okay, um, uh, just to share with you, okay, when we are doing this um, uh, electrochemical sensors, because we are targeting certain concentration, I will share with you our work. Uh, so then what we, we always do is we have to calculate the limit of detection, okay? What does it mean by limit of detection? Or in short, we call it LOD, okay? So when we study electrochemical sensor as a chemist, we are targeting analyte with lower concentration, okay? Because uh, what we are doing is actually at laboratory scale, okay? It's not industrial scale. So we are talking about low concentrations of analyte. So LOD is important for us to do the calculation so that we understand 
what are the limit of detection of our sensor? Okay, the sensor that produced from the laboratory, we can see that what are the detection limit? Okay, the concentration. So let's look into the uh, definition of LOD. LOD is the lowest concentration of analyte that can be reliably detected and distinguished from background noise. So the LOD of a sensor is typically determined by performing a series of measurements with the known concentrations of the analyte and then analyzing the data to determine the lowest concentration that can be detected with an acceptable level of confidence. Okay, so what important here when we want to study the LOD, okay, basically we want to, to, to do some calibration, okay, some calibration to look at the performance with a known concentration of analyte. Analyte is basically the reactant, okay, the target, the analyte. So means you are doing a series of concentrations and then you can, you can look into how uh, they perform, okay, what are the current or potential that can produce from here. So to calculate the LOD for a sensor, the following steps can be taken. You, one, you need to prepare a series of standard solution of the analyte with decreasing concentration. So basically you have to prepare standard solution with different concentration. And then you measure the signal, okay? Voltage or current depends on the technique. <coughs> From the sensor for each standard solution. Sensor is your working electrode that you, you do your modified electrode. Okay, when you do modified electrode, you can actually do <coughs> a measurement. Either you want to measure voltage or you want to measure current. And then you will calculate the average signal and the standard deviation for a set of measurements at each concentration level. Because you prepare a concentration, you know the concentration. So by having that concentration, what is the signal? Okay. And then from there, you can actually uh, draw a graph or a set of measurements, okay, based on each concentration level that you have prepared. Okay. And then you can plot the data, okay, as a signal versus concentration, okay, and determine the linear regression equation. You can see on the right hand side, these are the ones, okay. So you can have a current, for example. So every concentrations, okay, for example, two millimolar, four millimolar and whatnot, you can measure the current. So you can see the graph, okay? And you can actually measure the R squared, okay? So you plot the graph. The left-hand side is where you can see the different cost, different time, okay? Where you have a different signal for your um, uh, current. And then from here, you will calculate the LOD using the following equation. So LOD is equivalent to three times of the standard deviation divided by the slope of calibration curve. So then you can convert it to your concentration. So the LOD is expressed in the same unit as the concentration of the analyte and is an important parameter for evaluating the sensitivity of a sensor and its suitability for a particular application. Okay, so because you can Actually, why you need to study LOD, you want to see the performance of the modified electrode. Your modified electrode is your sensor. Okay, so in this terminology, when we talk about sensor, it's actually your modified electrode. Because now you study about modified electrode. So then the modified electrode, you can actually look into the performance, okay, by having the LOD. So you can see that it is sensitive or not sensitive, a sensor that you are producing. Okay. So LOD is, is important, all right, because it shows you the uh, performance, okay, the sensitivity of your sensor, or sensitivity of your modified electrode, the one that you have actually do the modification. Okay, so this is about all about electrochemical sensors because these are basically the fundamental of it, okay. First, you know the setup, all right, you know the setup, and then you know that uh, the electrode is compulsory. So what we are going to modify is actually on the working electrode, okay? And then you know what type of electrode, okay? A different geometry, different size, different type, all right? And then at the same time, you also understand about target analytes. What are the analytes of the interest that you can use? Uh, and then uh, the, the next one is you're talking about 
uh, the LOD because uh, that will, will look into the sensitivity of your sensor. What are the concentration, the range of concentration that your sensor can actually detect the target and the line. Okay, let's move to our work. Basically, work done in our laboratory. I would I would hope that the students can relate from the first session of lecture towards the end because the first uh, a session of lectures, you know, I've actually uh, refreshed just now where we are concentrating on the electroactive material, different type of electroactive material, either just a metal, or we can go for more complicated and polymer, or we can go for more complicated, it's actually a composite, you know, and having more than one <coughs> electroactive material. And then on the second session of our lecture, we are going more into um, how we can actually deposit or how how the deposition occurs on the top of the substrate on top of your electrode. Okay, we can start doing a modified electrode. So we can have different type of modified electrode techniques. For example, we're talking about the simplest one is actually the drop casting method, or we can also use electrochemical methods. For example, electro deposition, electro reduction, oxidation, and so on. Or we can do electropolymerization. Okay, on top of the uh, electrode, then we can actually produce the modified electrode. So after that modified electrode being produced using different techniques, uh, we are go, uh, we are we need to actually characterize it. <clears throat> so we do different method of characterization, but what I've shared with you is more on the electrochemical method as well to characterize, okay? Because we are using a lot of cyclic photometry, we are using a lot of potentiometry and amperometry as well. So these are the common that we are using. The EIS is more complicated, is the high level of uh, conductivity measurement, but it's good if you have an experience of working on EIS as well. So these are overall that I've actually shared with you. And finally today, we will, I have actually introduced you the applications of it. And what important here is that we can apply the knowledge to the world, to the, to the real laboratory work. So I'm going to share with you some of our uh, laboratory work related to what we have actually gone through. <clears throat> the first one is the prototype. These, uh, we, have, we have actually uh, produced a prototype. The one that you see is just a box, but inside there, there's a lot of things, you know, uh, that we actually integrate, integrate them together. So one of the uh, uh, electrochemical sensors that we have actually produced is to detect nitrate and nitrite, okay? This one is basically for uh, fertilizers, okay? So if you look at here, um, uh, these are the modified electrode you know, that we are concentrate on. So electrochemical detection of nitrate and nitrate, we are looking at the modified electrode. So in here, in these studies, the first substrate that we are using, you know, uh, the electrode, we have to call it electrode or substrate that we are using is ITO, indium titanium oxide. Okay, it's a glass substrate, but it's ITO. And then from the ITO, the electrode, we modify it and we deposit reduced graphene oxide. Okay, we do a deposition with, uh, with, um, uh, with, we layer it with reduced graphene oxide. And then to make it more effective, right, we use a carb copper nanoparticles. So we actually put a, a, a few layers of material so that it is more electroactive, okay? And the next level is copper nanoparticles. So copper nanoparticle reduced graphene oxide is basically our, our electroactive materials that being deposited on top of I2O substrate. And these are the whole system is called modified electrodes, okay? So this modified electrode used to detect nitrate and nitrite, okay? So uh, this this what we actually uh, uh, develop, and these are the prototypes. So what we can highlight over here, right? Uh, so in this particular study, we produce a precision level okay, of fabrication because the fabrication is very important. How you fabricate, okay? And when you do fabrication, we want to measure the thickness, the morphology. Okay, um, uh, we need to, to, to study the characterizations of the layers that have been deposited. Okay, and then in this case, we can do a dual detection of nitrate and nitrite. Okay, 
And then at the same time, you know, the advantage of um, uh, doing electrochemical sensors is they can do one on spot analytes quantification on spot. That's why I said it's in situ measurement. Okay, so we can do on spot. You can just put your analyte and then you can see the reading, the output from there. Okay, and then it's guided by accurate method because you know uh, we do a thorough studies on different. Because when we modify the electrode, definitely we want to study the layers, you know, uh, the thickness, uh, the, the morphology, the, the, the size, and so on. So these are a lot of um, uh, optimization need to be done. Okay. And from there, we see that we use a different type of uh, techniques, okay, to look at the performance. For example, on the right hand side diagram, you can see that we use cyclic voltammetries. Okay, from the cyclic voltammetry, we can control potential and how much current that can be produced by the sensors. And also, we use different pulse voltammetry. DPV is different pulse voltammetry. And this uh, we can actually use to study different concentrations of your nitrate and nitrite. Okay, so uh, these are the, the, some of the techniques used, you know, <coughs> that we can understand more on what we have studied. This is one of the studies. This is where we produce a prototype. The second one is uh, when we do a, a polymer as your modified electrode. So in this case, <coughs> we are targeting sensors for dopamine, okay, the drug. I share with you the step-by-step -step how the, the process will be. Okay, this is the real process. Uh, definitely the stage one, okay, uh, choosing the right Electroactive materials and fabrication is important. Okay, that's why you can have a different parameters. Okay, that you can play or you can try. Uh, you, it depends on the type of the composition of your materials. Okay, based on different molar ratio. For example, in this case, eh, if you look at the the the, the modified electrode is poly beta cyclodextrin with multi wall carbon nanotubes with uh, penny poly aniline. So it is not consisting only one material, but you know a combination, a composite. Okay, so in this case we have a beta dihydrocyclodextrin, and then we have multi-wall carbon nanotubes, and also we have a polymer. Okay, and this this has been um, uh, deposited. All right, so it depends on the different different parameters. There's a lot of work, you know, have been done on this particular stage. The next stage is you are talking about electro determination of analysis because this is where you want to look into the performance and you are studying using a few electrochemical methods. So in this case, you can use cyclic voltammetry, you can use chrono amperometry, you can use different pulse voltammetry. I hope that you have heard about this method. Okay, and then the third stage you are doing a characterization. Okay, either physical characterizations or electrochemical characterizations depends on your uh, type of uh, target okay, applications. And then, of course, when you study this, you are looking into the suitability of your sensor or the electrode, modified electrode that we're using. Is, is it selective, stable enough? It can be reproducibility or it can be repeatability. So these are some of the factors that you study in more detail so that you understand the whole system of your sensor, okay? So definitely you need to study selectivity because that composite, you know, the composite for your modified electrode is selective towards certain target analytes, okay? And we must make sure that it's stable because we don't want to be, you know, um, disturbed on the surface of the electrode. We want to be stable and so on. And then finally, when you have gone through all these stages, if the sensors is robust enough to detect certain target analytes, you can actually use it in the real sample. Okay, you can use it in the real sample. It means you can apply straight away uh, in the field, or you can actually do it measurement straight away. So the whole system is is the one that you need to understand and study. So one example that I will be sharing with you later in the slides is on poly beta cyclodextrin, okay? Um, uh, composite with multi-wall carbon nanotubes on top of the poly analyte. So this combination called a nanocomposite, okay? 
Why we call non-enzymatic sensor? Dopamine is not enzyme. So it's actually for non-enzymatic sensor for dopamine detection. So we will go through all this, stage one, stage two, stage three, four, and five. Okay, let's look into this. These are the things that uh, we, we are looking at. Okay, what, what's important here is that whatever we want to design on the sensor or the electroactive uh, modified electrode, is to reduce dopamine to dopamine hydroquinone, which is more stable. So it's a two electron transfer system. Okay, so these are the whole uh, reaction that we are targeting. So means to have that electron transfer is coming from the modified electrode. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, is done by my PhD student. She is now in America um, and it's a very good piece of work. All right. Uh, uh, what's important here is actually the fabrication part, okay? Uh, fabric fabrication part, they have a few methods of fabrication. In the case of here, if you look at here, uh, we can use electrochemical fabrication, okay, to form a polymer, okay? From the polymer, we can actually deposit on top of the glassy carbon. So polymer, we can do it electrochemically, reduce, and then, and then after that, we actually put on top of the GCE, it's a glassy carbon electrode. This is just a drop casting method. Okay, and then we combine the electrode, the GCE, which is actually the working electrode, okay, electrochemically with other material. For example, in the case of here, it's cyclodextrin and also multi-wall carbon nanotubes. Okay, so at the end of the day, we can say that this is our modified electrode. So modified electrode means we have GCE as our substrate, as our uh, elect uh, conductive electrode. And then on top of GCE, we actually deposit them with polymer, with beta cyclodextrin, with multi-wall carbon nanotube, with polyaniline. So these are called modified electrode. This modified electrode can be used okay, to reduce dopamine to hydroquinone, and also can be used to, uh, um, the, um, uh, to, to from uric acid to uric acid enol. Okay, so again, if you look at here, you must study the selectivity. Which one is better? So these are the selectivity. The stability is looking at how stable is your electroaccumulative deposit on top of your substrate. Okay. So then we are looking into other uh, uh, transition, physical characterization method, whereby we can see the, the surface uh, of the electrode, what we have actually deposited and so on. Then we are doing, uh, the, the one that we have done, we, we are looking into electrochemical fabrication because when we do, when we deposit the uh, uh, cyclodextrins, you know, multi-wall carbon nanotubes, you know, the diagram before, you know, when you do this, all right? So this is where we are looking into electrochemical fabrication. So we can study using cyclovectometry. So this one is, um, uh, I, I don't have time to actually explain to you what happened in here, but you can understand how does the composite being performed, okay, using cyclovectometry. And then we are looking into the conductivity studies. In the case of here, we are studying electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. We want to see how this, uh, uh, composite, you know, this nano composite can be formed uh, on the surface of glassy carbon as a modified electrode. So we are studying using electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. And then for sensing of dopamine, all right, so in the case of here, we are looking into a few uh, methods as well because uh, cyclic voltammetry is one of them where we can actually detect the positions of dopamine, uric acid. For example, amino acid, AA, DA, and UA. So if you look at here, you can see that the dopamine gives the highest um, current <coughs> being produced. So means the nanocomposite of this uh, cyclodextrin, multi walls, and uh, panine is more prone to detect dopamine as compared to uric acid. So from here, we can actually study uh, the selectivity, okay? Uh, looking into which target analyte is more selective towards your uh, modified electrode. So this can be studied <coughs> using uh, a few parameters. You can change your potential, you know, you can change the scan rate 
you can change the amount of uh, your materials and whatnot. So this being studied is quite detailed on that. And then uh, towards the end, we want to look into the concentration profile because we want to calculate the LOD, remember? The LOD. So we are targeting, looking at amperometric uh, method, okay, where, where we can have a known concentrations. And then from the known concentration, we actually calculate the LOD. And from here, you can see that the LOD of this is recorded at these concentrations, okay? The one that actually on the right. So what can be concluded in this study is that um, uh, we are uh, producing a non-enzymatic electrochemical sensors for a selective detection of dopamine, even in the presence of AA and UA, amino acids and also uric acid, okay? And what can be measured as well in this study is a high surface area, okay? because we are looking into the, the uh, morphological studies, we can see that there are a lot of uh, high surface area on that, okay? And then the LOD that we can, uh, we can study is looking at the limit of detection. And from here, you can see that you can have 0 0.0164 micromolar per liter, okay? The concentration, okay? Uh, then uh, it's actually <coughs> can be detected at this lowest concentrations of the dopamine. But interesting enough here, this um, uh, modified electrode also can be used to detect uric acid, okay, and also amino acid, okay. All right, so these are the examples to be more details, but I have a few uh, papers publication based on uh, uh, electrochemical sensors. You can always look into more details. These are all work done by uh, students, okay. For example, um, we have um, uh, uh, electrochemical sensors that can detect lead, okay, which is a, a plumbum two plus ions, okay. On this plumbum two plus ion is based on the nickel oxide and and um, silver, okay, uh, nanoparticles. So in this case, uh, uh, we can actually just drop cast on top of the modified electrode. And then you can see that uh, studies, electrochemical studies been done using a different electrochemical method. And what's important here is that when we modify electrode, these are the LOD, the limit of detection, about 0 0.06 nanomolar, okay, nanomolar. And this selectivity uh, to make sure that it's, it's detected plumbum 2 plus at a good concentration, we are also using, uh, we are also um, doing some selectivity studies with other interfering ions, such as as listed here. So then from here, you can see that it, it is um, uh, combinations of composites, okay? The modified electrode is prone towards plumbum two plus, okay? As compared to other ions on the list. So this shows it's very selective towards um, lead two plus. On the other examples is uh, again on dopamine, but in this case is different uh, material, it's molybdenum disulfide. This is a 2D material, it's abundant, it's cheap. So we are studying um, uh, 2D materials like molybdenum disulfide. And in this particular case, we also uh, we composite with silver, okay? So we have silver molybdenum disulfide. So in this case, we are talking about nano sheet. So it's a nano shape, and then uh, we drop cast on top of the glassy carbon, okay? And then this modified electrode bean studies, and we are looking as well on the selectivity. Besides looking at dopamine, we also looking at ascorbic acid and also uric acid. So in this case, uh, we can see it's, it's more towards dopamine as compared to other uh, materials. So is this selectivity is very important. So what came up from here when we do amperometric, okay, we can see that this modified electrode consisting of molybdenum disulfide and silver nanoparticles, they can actually detect at 0 0.2 micromolar. So means a lower concentration, the lowest concentration they can go is up to 0 0.2 micromolar. So the next one is a glucose sensor, okay. In this glucose sensor, basically, again, uh, <clears throat> is uh, using a polypyrrole. So we have zinc, iron, and iron oxide. So zinc with iron oxide and polypyrrole is being deposited <coughs> on top of the uh, glassy carbon modified electrode, okay? 
So we can see it, see here the same studies, you know, we can use the same study to detect glucose. So in this case, you can see that how cyclic voltammetry can play a role to detect glucose. And finally, by using amperometric response, you can uh, measure the LOD. So in this case, the compositions of this produce 0.09 micromolar. Okay, so these are also on glucose sensor, but in this case, we are using polypyro and zinc oxide as your modified electrode. <clears throat> the fourth one is uh, uh, to detect hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so again, in this case, we are talking about palladium, reduced graphene oxide on the substrate of ITO. It's not glassy carbon. So in this case, case it's ITO. <clears throat> So the preparation method depends is a uh, is a chemical reactions and also electrochemical reactions and finally we got this palladium medium uh, reduced graphene oxide modified so in this case we are producing a nano walls nano walls these are nano walls with different rgo loadings and then we are electrochemically deposited on top of indium tin oxide okay and we are looking into selectivity stairs. In this case, when you talk about hydrogen peroxide, there are also other uh, chemicals being tested. And we can also uh, measure the LOD using amperometric. And you can see that these electrochemical sensors with RGO loading, we can see that um, the LOD is about 0 0.24 micromolar. So these are the whole studies that have been done. Okay? Uh, uh, into the palladium reduced graphene oxide and modified uh, indium titanium oxide uh, substrate. And the final one is on the formaldehyde. We can detect formaldehyde, but in this case, we are using bimetallic palladium platinum, a nitrogen dog graphene, okay, on top of the polypyrrole composite, composite for formaldehyde sensor. So this is how it looks on the morphology of that. And then you can, you can study this uh, using a, a to, to, to look into the conductivity. You also can use a EIS. And then you can also look into a different uh, amount concentrations of the formaldehyde sensors. Okay. And then from here, you can measure the LOD. So for this um, electroactive uh, layers uh, and modified electrode, you can see that they can detect 27 micromolar. So this one is, is quite a, a, a high range of the uh, detection limit. We're talking about micromolar, uh, can be used for this palladium platinum. And you can see that when you use the platinum, you know, the, they, they, they can actually detect more, okay, because it's really a conductive material. So that is uh, overall the example. So I hope that the students can benefit from this. And uh, if there is any other questions, you can uh, post it, all right? So we can have further discussion before we end the session. So I think with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Yatima for the lecture. So uh, for the student, uh, most of them is now is a research student, Professor Yatima oh, in this, last year uh, students, the, this last year students. Oh, the final year so, student, eh? Final year students, sorry. Final year students. So uh, like five of them probably uh, doing research also about sensor uh, under supervision of Professor Ivan. So maybe I will ask them <laughs> if there are any question regarding with this. So uh, Robic Firly, uh, silakan. Robic Firly. Jangan lupa di mute, masih di mute. Robi. Okay, go ahead, Robic Firly. You raise your hand. So if you, I am yes. Robic Firly. Uh, uh, I would like to ask to Professor Yatima about the electrochemical sensor. For the electro sensor, uh, can you 
explain step by step how to control or optimize to get lower LOD or NLO key because I can't I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Robbie. Uh, in I, I can't hear you. You are you are muted, Robbie. Okay. okay. Mm. <clears throat> uh, Am I? Yes. It's, it's, it's a bit lagging. It's a bit lagging. I could not. I could not hear the whole of your question. Okay, I will repeat it. Uh, my question is uh, for the electro sensor. Can you okay. explain uh, how to control or optimize to get a lower LOD and LO key? Because in electrochemical sensor, uh, LOD and LO key and all and LO key are uh, important things. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, I've actually shared with you how we can, can calculate that one. Okay. We use amperometry. Okay. Um, when, when you build up your own modified electrode. Okay. I just give you brief, very brief, because uh, I think um, it's, it's difficult because, you know, it should be a more uh, uh, hands-on, you know, if you want to explain more, it's more hands-on. But the concept that I've actually did, uh, discussed or uh, shared with you earlier is that you can set up a few concentrations of your analytes, all right? Um, uh, you, have, you must have a, the range, you know, the bigger range. It depends on the size of the electrode. You must have a range of known concentrations of your analyte, okay? So every known concentration you need to measure. You need to measure using amperometric method, okay? And then you can see how the current change. Okay, let's say the, how the current or how the voltage it depends on your, your method. Okay, then from there, as I mentioned, you draw a graph because you know the concentration and you know the current, you know, producing from that concentration, you plot the graph. And from the plot of graph, then you can calculate the LOD. Okay, but what's important here, you might not know the sensitivity of your modified electrode. Okay, you said you cannot get the readings, but maybe it's not detected your concentration because when you study, uh, when you do a modified electrode, uh, is, is you need to have a, a scale of how, what are the surface area that you are working on. Okay, because if you, if you're working on a, um, a low surface area, definitely is more sensitive. It's more, it's higher surface area is more sensitive, but I'm talking about the concentration. Okay, the concentration. So you must be very practical in terms of um, uh, doing the standard concentrations because that the standard concentration will give you the whole scale of the LOD of your sensor uh, material. So method is easy, you just use amperometry, but the preparation of concentrations, you know, that be sensitive towards your modified electrode, also you must understand it. Okay, you might prepare different range of concentration. That's why you could not get the readings, all right? So um, uh, that's where you zoom in. Sometimes you start with the bigger scale of concentrations as, um, uh, setups, and after that you zoom in into more uh, um, lower uh, concentration difference between one to the other, so that you can have the right reading. So this is what I'm suggesting when you do that. Uh, the method that we use is amperometric method. It's straightforward. It, it's not very complicated, I would say. Okay, it's quite easy. It's quite easy. The only thing is that we don't know the behavior of your modified electrode. Okay, and you have to choose the right concentrations to be detected of your target analytes. That's why it's very important also to study selectivity. Okay, then you can see that the, 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 the electrode sel uh, selectively towards uh, certain of your target analytes. Because when you have interference ion, definitely you could not get the right uh, concentrations. Okay, that's my advice, uh, Robert. Um, uh, you can try and do using amperometric method. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Thank Professor Yatima. For the question. So uh, regarding with this, Professor Yatima, because as we know, the, the uh, uh, you mentioned about uh, you're also uh, like sensing the virus 
For example, probably nowadays, uh, last year you tried to oh sense the COVID virus. So mm -hmm. the the amount of the virus is very small. I mean, it's very low. Uh, how uh, can you get that limit of detection of the virus in your previous research about this COVID <laughs> virus, <laughs> Professor? Maybe you can share with okay. us. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm not involved directly, but I heard that my team are actually working on it, but it's not easy because, because um, that's one is the challenge part is the sample itself. Okay, the sample itself, because we have to work with the medical people and the ethics issue taken a lot of time. Uh, actually, uh, they, they are a group of people who actually approached me to do this, uh, you know, to look into uh, concentrations of the virus, you know, that in certain uh, blood. You know, certain yes. human blood, but because I don't have time, and at the same time, uh, it's not straightforward. You know, it's not really straightforward because we have to find a suitable, um, a suitable modified electrode to say, yeah, in general, um, uh, that that uh, prone towards uh, uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, definitely, there's a lot of money. You know, if we uh, we agree to 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 go for that research, is a lot of money. But because I don't have time, I could not. Uh, even my, my team, they are a bit not confident of themselves to proceed with that offer. So we didn't do it. Uh, and what I heard is, is that they have to send sample abroad for that at the moment. So still uh, not that, you know, local people can actually do it. You know, it's, it's challenging. <laughs> not straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor. So, uh, yes. Any other questions from the students? Maybe I will call the name uh, Almira Aziza because yeah. she's also. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ridwan, for the opportunity. Uh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Siatima, uh, Prof. Yatima, for the lecture. Uh, I want to ask uh, something. Uh, my research is based on the electrochemical sensor, uh, the electrochemical luminescence, and uh, I want to ask, uh, sometimes we do mo modification on our electrode to increase the uh, sensor signal. Uh, is there any way or procedure to choose the material to be modificated on the uh, our uh, electrode uh, surface? Thank you. I'm not really uh, understand your question, but I'm trying to... to, to to answer it, all right? Um, you're talking about modification, okay? Uh, modification of your electrode. Okay, I, I'm not sure whether you are, you joined my le second lecture. My second lecture was about fabrication and the fabrication, we have a different type of fabrication. The most easiest ways is actually a drop casting, means you prepare your sample chemical reactions, you know, a different uh, part, and then you drop cast on top of the electrode. That's a simple mod. Uh, uh, drop casting method, you know, whereby you modify the substrate or the electrode, you know, on, uh, and then you you put some electrode atom material on top of the electrode. That's the that's the common fabrication method. But other fabrication method, for example, hydrothermal or other fabrication, for example, uh, electrode deposition method, electropolymerization method. So these are more challenging because you need to control the potential. You're talking about electrochemical method uh, on the fabrication part. This is uh, the way that you know this is very challenging. But that is that is not that is uh, not impossible. It's possible if you understand. Because when you want to deposit certain material, you must know uh, the position where the material can be reduced, oxidized. Then you can control with that position. So you can have some deposition material using electrochemical method. That's one. The other thing is uh, hydrothermal. You control the, the, the temperature, okay, and then you can also do electrochemically, okay. So the modification part or the fabrication part is important to understand the material that you're using, the behavior of your material. Okay, for example, you're using metal deposit or using combinations of uh, compositions of metal and also uh, a carbon nanotube, for example. So you must understand your electroactive material first and then only you know what is the best fabrication method. Okay, in my lab, normally we just do drop casting or electro deposition method, okay? Because um, uh, that's that's uh, the best, you know, uh, which we can see that, you know, we can understand more, especially when we need to do a composition. The composition, the composites one is also challenging because 
uh, it, it depends on you. You want to coat on top of your polymer or you want to blend with your polymer. Uh, so you have to understand that. Okay, sometimes you want to decorate. That's why they, they call it decorated. You just want to decorate on top of polymer, for example. You don't want your, 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 your metals to be incorporated in the backbone of the polymer. Uh, so then that is also about chemistry. You have to understand that before you deposit. So it's not only on the fabrication part, but to understand the material that being used to deposit. Uh, so I think I hope that it, it answers some of your questions, but but definitely, you know, by by choosing the right electroactive materials and you know what is your application. For example, you are targeting a bigger electrochemical window for targeting, you know, uh, uh, metallic ions, for example. Then maybe you can use like platinum. Uh, you know, you can use like a polymer, which they have a they have a, a bigger electrochemical window in that sense. So the choosing of the electroactive materials on your application part also is important. Okay, so I hope that you know somehow it gives you some insights on how you can do the fabrication on the modified electro. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh... Is it okay, Almira? Yes, uh, it is uh, clear enough. Thank you, Prof. Yatima. Thank you. Okay. We have one more question, Prof. Yatima. So, yeah. do, do you? yes, okay. Right. Okay, Valencia, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Pak Ritwan. And hello, Prof. Good morning. Thank you very much for your lecture. It's very amazing and inspiring. So, I'd like to ask. Uh, since I'm very interested on the electrochemistry method that we use to detect some materials, uh, can you please give us more explanation about advantages and disadvantages of several methods like CV, LSP, DPV, or chronoamperometry and EIS? Uh, which one uh, is the best method to use uh, on the detection using electrochemistry method? That's okay. my question. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Valencia. So you have some ideas of using different uh, electrochemical methods. That's great. At least you understand what are the every functions of these electrochemical methods. What are you looking at? What kind of data that you're looking at? Okay. Uh, for example, you're talking about cyclic voltammetry. All right. Cyclic voltammetry is uh, the most common because you will scan from positive to negative, negative to positive potential or either way. All right means you can do the first scanning. The first scanning is basically to understand your electric system is detected on certain uh, potential range, okay? And then after that, you can zoom in into certain potential window, for example, and you can start doing other things. For example, you can do amperometric studies or you can do other things as well. So there are quite a number of electrochemical methods that can be used because that gives you more understanding, you know? Especially when you do amperometric, for example, because it depends on the time that you scan, all right? So uh, how you can sustain the current at certain time, for example. And then, um, uh, and then besides that, you're talking about EIS. EIS basically is a method, is more, is for, for me, it's more advanced and precise method, all right? Uh, but again, it's a bit complicated because you need to study the whole cell system so that it match with your findings. So you need to have some ideas of electrical circuits plus, and then after that, you, you can have more understanding of how this resistance occurs, you know, throughout your uh, sample system. Okay. So if, if you're talking about this, you know, if you look at uh, what I've shared with you in certain studies, it's a combination of different electrochemical methods. It's not just one. If, if, if it's just one uh, electrochemical method, sometimes we could not have the whole ideas. All right, like what we do NMR. If you just study about proton NMR, you could not study the whole idea of the chemical structure. You need to study carbon-13 NMR, for example. If there is any sulfur uh, in your uh, chemical compound, then you might study the sulfur NMR, for example. Then with all this information, you can be integrated and you can full understanding about the system. So this is also how it works in electrochemical methods. You might not only using one method, but you might have a combination of electrochemical method for you to understand and elaborate more on your findings. Because, for example, in your study, are you targeting the analyze or are you targeting different type of modified electrode, for example? If you're studying, uh, your, your, your study is more on targeting a different modified electrode 
or different compositions of electroactive materials on top of your modified electrodes, then I would suggest that you study using EIS because EIS used uh, to study the resistivity, okay, at, or looking at the uh, stability or conductivity of your modified electrode. But if you're targeting more an analyte, analyte, for example, okay, analyte concentration, concentration more on different analyte, okay, then maybe you might use amperometric, for example, and cyclobotometry. And do selectivity study. Selectivity definitely you use uh, most of it is studying using amperometric. So choosing the right electrochemical methods is important because that will give you more understanding about the whole system that you are targeting for. So I hope Valencia it answers some of the questions. Uh, I think Prof Ivan also have a very advanced knowledge in here in this area. So I think it's good that the students we can share some ideas. You know how we can actually explore more into the area. It's very interesting. And um, definitely, you can publish a very good paper. So, all the best to you, Valencia. Thank you very much. Got it. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, Valencia and Professor Atima. Because the time constraint, uh, yeah. Professor Atima has the uh, guest on 9.30. So, uh, Professor, before we conclude the uh, this session, uh, on behalf of head of department, Professor, um, um, we are very sorry that uh, he cannot join us today, but, but on behalf, I would like to share some like a uh, certificate of mm. appreciation, something like that, Professor mm -hmm. Yatima. Mm, yeah, <laughs> so, thank you very much. So uh, this is for the appreciation of the uh, contribution from you to our program in this UE Resolve World Class Professor Lecture Series, Professor. So uh, on behalf of that, uh, Dr. Asep Saifumila, we would like to uh, send a, a gratitude uh, for you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I really hope that, you know, uh, it can give uh, some sharing knowledge with the students as well. Uh. I mean, that, that's the most important. Hopefully we can, uh, you can contribute uh, for the next, uh, <laughs> our next program, inshallah. Professor, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, so be, I think before... I will also... Uh, before yes. we end, I think I would also like to thank, a special, special thanks to Prof. Ivan Dini, I think, for inviting me to join his lecture class, uh, her lecture class, sorry, her lecture class. I think it's a great opportunity for me to actually have some exchange ideas with the students. Uh, I also thank to the um, Dean of Faculty and also Head of Department uh, for, gi for giving me the opportunity to, to share this and to give lectures together with Prof. Ivan Tim. Uh, and thank you to you too, because you've been the chairman for this uh, 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 slot. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that you know it benefits uh, somehow, but if it's not, I'm really sorry. Apologize for the for the mistakes or whatever that is not you know up to your expectation. Uh, but then thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Professor Yatima. Before we conclude, as uh, as usual, we will have like a photo session. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. 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 So All right. <laughs> Okay. So uh, for the student, please open your uh, camera or video so we will take a photo shoot together. So uh, Mbak Safira, can you Bisa. coordinate? Bisa di yeah. Bisa Bisa. Minta tolong, yeah. Baik, uh, untuk partisipan bisa dinyalakan kameranya ya. Saya hitung ya. Satu, dua, tiga. Satu, dua, tiga. Baik, untuk selanjutnya. Satu, dua, tiga. Baik, uh, sudah, Pak. Oke, terima kasih, terima kasih Mas Afi. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Iwan. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Iwan. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sel thank Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya. Thank you. Bye. Terima kasih semua yang dap yang tiga. Terima kasih Tuhan. Ya, berapa? Terima kasih Tuhan. Selesai semua ya Bu. Terima kasih Mbak Jangan lupa ya. yang nanya-nanya nanti voucher lima puluh ribunya ke ruangan saya ya. Asik, dikasih. Waduh, dikasih THR sama Pak Ridwan. <laughs> ya Bu Ipan. Terima kasih Bu Ipan. Ya, terima kasih Pak Ridwan. Ya, saya live ya Bu. Sama